The earliest recorded examples of what we now call jazz was called ragtime. Scott Joplin was the most famous composer from the ragtime era. Ragtime was popular in the late 19th century and early 20th century. The style derived from marches that were played with syncopated rhythms. Black musicians called this syncopated style ragging, and the tunes they wrote were called rags. Scott Joplin was referred to as the king of ragtime. As you're going to see, it was common to give popular musicians the title of king. He wrote big hits like the Maple Leaf Rag and the Entertainer. There were two primary ways that composers could earn royalties in the early 20th century, the sales of piano rolls and the sales of sheet music, which was like a fake book sold one tune at a time. Joplin wrote over a hundred rags and even an opera, which unfortunately bankrupted him when he tried to self-stage it, and it left him penniless at the time of his death in 1917, which was the same year that the very first jazz record was made. Joplin predicted that he would achieve true fame only after he was gone, and that turned out to be true. A revival of interest in ragtime music in the 1960s led to a staging of his opera in 1972, and Joplin was posthumously awarded the Pulitzer Prize. The next year, the movie The Sting featured Joplin's music, with a piano part played by the movie's composer, Marvin Hamlish. It won the Oscar for Best Original Song and Adaptation. Here's a piano roll version of Joplin playing his own composition, The Maple Leaf Rag. And now here's a clip from a book and a recording called Dick Hyman's Century of Jazz. This project was originally just a recording where he talked about and demonstrated a wide range of jazz styles from ragtime to McCoy Tyner. Later, a book was added containing transcriptions of everything he played off the cuff. We'll dip into it a few times during this course, but I'd call this book and recording a must-have, especially for piano players. This is a piece called Pasquinade, a caprice, by Louis Moreau Gottschalk, a New Orleans composer and concert pianist, who wrote it in 1862 when he had absorbed 
from black people in New Orleans the rhythms of black folk music. He had absorbed some of the elementary things at any rate, and in the next section of the piece, which I'm going to play for you, listen to this syncopation. the syncopation right there, this here. This became characteristic of a dance called the cakewalk, which by the early 1890s had become something that everybody was doing, white people as well as uh, black people, and uh, it produced uh, a number of uh, popular songs which incorporated that same rhythm. Here's one called At a Georgia Camp Meeting from the 1890s. This is, as I said before, sort of elementary syncopation and it took another few years before people in Scott Joplin's generation were doubling the syncopation at the level of the eighth note so that it sounded more like this. Maple Leaf was published at the end of 1899. So we have a span that goes back to 1862 with Paskey Nod, and 30 years later, the Cakewalks, uh, which became popular in the 1890s, and then maybe 10 years after that, the efforts of Joplin and the other ragtime piano players to make it even more complex. The Jazz History Series continues in the next episode. Before you go there, please take half a second to click the like button for this one. 